Hi, welcome back to Famous or Not, We're Happy. I'm Crystal. And I'm Enrique. Welcome. We have another um, album, album review. review. Yeah, we do. This one is going to be of Post Malone's. It's called, what was it? 12 Carat Toothache. Toothache. Yeah. Yes. Sorry, we just have up the um, the lyrics. So, yeah, for this album, we're going to be following along with the lyrics. And, yeah, this is our first time listening to, at least for me, um, Post Malone's, like, full album. Um, yeah, me even, too. Even the previous albums, I would always just listen to, like, the top, you know, the, the radio hits and stuff. You yeah. Know, congratulations and... We did see him perform um, at Dane Vegas Festival. Yeah, and we did. I was quite surprised by how good he was. Yeah, he's a good performer. Yeah, very good performer. Very good. That's true. But yeah, without any further ado, this just dropped, I think, yesterday or this morning? Today. Yeah, Friday, June 3rd. Today is Friday, June 3rd. So yeah, let's get it. The first track is called Reputation, number one. interesting obviously he's talking about like his reputation and um you know it probably all the pressure of like being that pop star yeah and living that rock star rock star pop star life you guys feel free to correct me but i think this is like his like the first album back for for like from like a break that he had that he hasn't uploaded or you know dropped any music And, um, yeah, like you said, I think it just shows, like, the dark side of what entertainers go through. You know, they just, the fans all really want is just entertainment, but forget Mm -hmm. that they're humans, too. And I just wanted to point out, too, that he has a really good, like, he got his auto-tune down. Yeah. Like, it's so nice. Like, his he has such a good voice. Yeah, his voice is really cool. I really like the tone of it, and especially when he sings. um, Yeah, like the... Yeah, like, that it's part. So good. Yeah, that part sounds really cool. I could hear him sing with his auto tune for hours. It's it's super. It's like you. It's very unique too. I don't think I've ever like kind of Travis Scott, but not Travis Scott's. I feel like is way more auto tuned out. You know. Yeah, I agree. I feel like um, I haven't heard of sound that is similar to his. Yeah, it's very unique. Which is nice to hear. He got he got his his voice down. That's something me and her always talk about. Is like when we hear, you know, a lo- most of these artists nowadays have some sort of auto tune. It's cool to, like Isaiah Rashad was one for example that we're like, oh, he got his sound down. Like it's yeah. very nice. Like him too. Like he could sing and stuff. Yeah. But yeah, that was a that was a good first song. Very dark, um, shadowy song. Let's get into the next song. But before we get into the next song, don't mind our uh our noses that are peeling because we just came back from the beach yes because i know it's high definition you know what I'm about. <laughs> <laughs> okay so track number two is featuring roddy rich it is called cooped up which i think i've heard this song yeah he always has good beats too I see that playing on the radio. Yeah. And I, I think that. that's why, I don't know, for some reason I feel like it, he dropped this as a single before the album. Oh, okay. I haven't heard it before. Uh, unless I like heard it on his Instagram or something. But yeah, that was a really good song. Uh, I really like the Post Malone took Roddy Rich out on his first dates of like, you know, of yeah, that's that really is cool. true. Like you love to see artists bring, you know, up and coming and stuff. That's cool. And now they have, like, this song that they're both, like, you know, on together. Yeah. And and their careers are well off now. Okay, so track number three is Lemon Tree.
Bader. Bader. Sounds country when he said yeah. that. Yeah. Was he from Texas, I think? I have no idea. Yeah, I think he is. And show me that I'm better. Better. So people got never. Okay, after that song, I think that's like what this whole album's gonna be more mostly like just even looking at the picture you know the album cover it's like just shadowy you know really dark yeah um my voice I cracked mean, she said yeah <clears throat> yeah well, yeah it's a toothache so it's like something not pleasant you know yeah i mean you know there's a little bit of optimism in that song though he's gonna um, burn it down and grow something better yeah, that's true. So maybe he's like, okay, we're starting. Something better. Something better. So maybe he's going to get something better and um, restart. Yeah, the more that I listen to Post Malone, yeah, he's a really good. It's a really nice um, singing voice with the autotune. I like what he's done with it. It's cool. Yeah. Next track, number four, is Wrapped Around Your Finger. You keep me wrapped around. wrapped around your finger that was a cool one yeah uh, that one reminded me of that one hit song that he had um sunflower that's funny me too um it reminded me of that song yeah i think it was just like that um tune that was playing in the background the whole time mm -hmm. it was similar to sunflower yeah well, i mean you know it's catchy it's a pop song so yeah, it's like a his twist of a love song, a well, heart heartbreak song. Yeah. Okay, not too much to say on that track, but next track is number five, featuring Doja Cat. In parentheses, it says a happier song called "I Like You." I wanna be a friend, go shopping in a Benz. I like you, I do. How to pull this girl like a ham, ham. Let's take a little dip. <laughs> <laughs> He's talking about his hamstring. I like that little hook. Yeah. So he wasn't wrong about that being a happier song. Yeah. Even the beat is a lot more catchier and upbeat. I feel like he his um tone of voice he matched it with Doja Cat's style of rapping, how she normally is, kind of um very playful. Like you know how Doja mm. Cat raps, so she's like Yeah. Like that. Um so I think it was like the perfect like that. Well, like, I have her voice in my head, but I can't, like, say it. But you can't rap? No, I can't, like, um, say it how she yeah. changes her voice. Oh, yeah, she uses autotune and stuff. Yeah. But it was a good feature in match, this yeah, song. Yeah, it was cool. I liked it. Yeah. I Like You is probably going to be on the radio. Next track is I Cannot Be, and in parentheses it says a sadder song featuring Gunna. Oh my gosh, I'm scared. <laughs> I'm scared I'm gonna cry. How am I free when you hold me so tight? Is that Gunna? Yeah. It kinda sounds like Pulse, so. Oh, no, that's Gunna. So that's Gunna. Maybe he's talking about the pressure of being a musician and just like the overall, you know, society like telling him and then his like record label and managers. Mm. Maybe that's who he's kind of throwing he, that song to. That one, you, do you think he's still talking about like himself of being an artist? Yeah. It's cool though, because it's like, it could mean that, but it could also be like a love song. Like it, yeah. it's still... It's kind of broad enough to 
be like towards a person, a specific person, a lover, an ex lover. Yeah, I like, agree. It could know? be either one. Because that's fun. That's funny that you bring that up, of like him being an artist towards the corp like society. Yeah. Whereas I thought it was more of a like love song. Like, I mean, it someone can holding be him back because like he on here he has. I mean, unless he's connecting it to reputation, because I feel like that one was definitely, like, him being an artist. Mm -hmm. But then he's also already had, like, two or three love songs on here. Yeah. And it could also just, like, be another one. So it could be either. Yeah, that's true. Maybe it's both. But yeah, Gunna was a good feature. Don't really listen to him that much. So it was, at first we thought it was Post Malone. Yeah. Still. No, at first we thought it was Gunna. But it was just Post Malone rapping fast. And then Gunna came and he had a deeper voice. But yes. next track is number seven called Insane. Take your bitch, give her back. Insane, send her pack. She was acting crazy. Yeah, I'm a bastard, I'm a bastard. Hey, in the backseat, rain. She was classy, nice and nasty. I like that one. I like the the pause and the hey, and then like insane. Like yeah, it adds a nice. Um, you know, it's catchy. Like you could easily sing along to it after listening to it the first time. Yeah, that one. That one was a uh, very, very, very catchy. Yeah, I see. I mean, out of all of them so far, I see myself probably listening to that one again. Yeah, I agree. And, and it's like a lot more like a trap song. Yeah, you know. With the uh, boom, boom in the back. I don't know what that's called. The bass? I don't know. The I, bass? I like it, though. Um, yeah, this is like a song like to listen to in the gym. Yeah, for sure. You could get pumped up with that one. Yeah. Okay, next track is track number eight called Love, Hate, Letter to Alcohol. Oh, before we start this next track, though, too, uh, he loves his cigarettes and yeah. his Bud Light. Yeah, <laughs> he's made it very clear though. Like um, his last album, Beer and Bentleys, I think. But oh. he always talks about his Bud Light and cigarettes, mm. which I believe. I mean, he's definitely Southern. I'm pretty sure he's from Texas. Let me look it up. Oh, okay, right. yeah, his family moved to Texas, so that's where this, you know. And that's where he began to play guitar. That's why he has that Southern twang when he's like bad or. Bader. It's with certain words, and you could hear it when he's singing. The accent comes out. So now the next track, Love Hate Letter to Alcohol, featuring Fleet Foxes. Guess I should have kept that shit to myself. Found my keys and I went back out. Someone asked me. Love hate relationship. Love hate letter to alcohol. Um, you know he's he's got some shadows he's dealing with. Yeah, it's a uh, self-explanatory. Yeah, but uh, not much to say there. I was listening to. I saw the uh, interview he had with First We Feast, mm -hmm. and he, you know, he's a big gamer, and he was talking about how there's a song, a song or songs that like could be in a, a game. Like a video game, and that one in the beginning when it was just like the big drums and shit, like that's what I am pictured beginning of a song or beginning of a game. Of a game, you know? Yeah, that's true. I could see that. Like a big, it's just like you're just waiting to see what's gonna happen. Like, uh, what are the? I mean, I'm not a gamer, so I don't know the games, but like the like you're fighting dragons and shit. Yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah, Zelda is that one? I like i know. said but i could see, i could see wrong. that playing in the background yeah number nine is wasting angels by with the kid Leroy. this is like a private plane upon my ring this is like the first time i bought a chain I gotta be honest, I didn't care for it. Yeah, no, nah, it was nothing special for me. I think most of this album, too, because yeah. I think it's just like 
you know, a lot of we're not going to like every single artist that we listen to. Yeah. And it's just it's like a niche, you know, like his niche, I feel like for the most part is more like shadowy, dark music, you know, just heartbreak or what artists go through and stuff, at least for this album. And like, at least right now in my point in life and my stage of my life right now, it's like I don't care for this music right now. Yeah. I like more upbeat or like I'm doing good, like my life is good, which I know, you know, there's people going through shit, which this is going to float more with them. Whereas like for now, in my point of life, like I just said, like it's I don't I don't care for it, you know? Yeah, I agree. There's just nothing we can relate to here. Um, Yeah. And that's the whole thing. It's just like that's what makes a good song a good song to a person because they really relate to it. Whereas right now, like, I, I can't really, I can't relate to all this. Yeah. So far, my favorite song is Insane, just because, like, the beat's good. and It was catchy. It was catchy. Yeah. I could see myself, like, liking it. But other than that, moving on to the next one. Number 10 called... <laughs> it got us stumped. Um, Let's try it together. He... he- Ethancia. 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 It's the E and the U that's confusing. EU. Ethancia. It's like Euro. E U R O. Your. Like Europe. Ethancia. 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 We're like Ethancia. Ethancia. Yeah, Ethancia. Yvancia. Took a fuck sip from a ash can. Euthanasia. 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 <laughs> we added in Italian. Behold a son. Do this. He cracked it open. Go oh. out. I can. Okay. What's. Do you know. You don't know what euthanasia is? I don't know what euthanasia is. I've never heard it. Me neither. I don't know. The way that the song is, is that like what they put for the dogs to put them down? Let's see. Euthanasia. The painless killing of a patient suffering from a incurable and painful disease or an irreversible coma. Oh. So it's oh. like what would they put to put humans down? <laughs> it says it's illegal oh. in some countries. You know, listening to this album too, I I see why he has so many fans that like love him and are loyal to him because he sings about you know dark shit like the 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 shadow shadowy part of our of you know our life experiences and I think when you sing about that, it's like your fans are more um, attracted to you and love towards you because they feel that they have someone you know. Like, I'm not alone. In yeah, this. Like, that's there's, true. There's a whole, um, what's it called? A whole celebrity, a whole artist that's going through the same thing. I'm related to him. Yeah, and also that, like, he's not hiding any parts of himself. He's, like, fully e- expressing everything that he's feeling, whether, it, you know, like, people like it or not. Like, that's just what he feels. Yeah, like, I won't, like, I don't really listen to his music. I don't really like his music, but I like him as a person and I have a lot more respect for him as a person now yeah. you know and i think that's why like he is who he is and people like him around and like he's just such a good guy in person and everything but yeah that's why i just think you know has he has a lot of fans and loyal fans you know yeah next track is number 11 when i'm alone Okay, when I'm alone, the same thing, you know. Yeah, just like the same thing throughout the album. Moving on. You know, moving on. Number 12, 12. Waiting for a Miracle. Oh, my God. Just show me up for heaven's sake. Waiting for a Miracle heavy song um heavy song but it's 
it just reminds me of like Snoop Dogg was talking about how like when you sing or you know when you're an artist and you put songs out like this it's like risky because you're playing with death and like you know you saw what happened to X you saw what happened to Mac Miller R.I.P. like you know even the music videos it's like it's so heavy manifesting death it's like you know if you're putting yourself in a coffin then like what are you saying and if you're talking about loading up your firearm like what are you really saying you know yeah so it's just scary to like hear stuff like this from from an artist you know yeah i agree even the first song like i mean you know this whole album he's talked about death and like feel that people do not take it seriously but whatever you are putting out especially when you have this platform out to the masses you are manifesting and attracting that into the universe and it will come right back to you. Like, that's why you don't mess around with, you know, like X, how you just said, and Mac Miller both made music videos of putting themselves in coffins right before they passed away. And a lot of people don't make that connection. And this is why, like, I don't even listen to this type of music just because of that. And it's... Yeah, and it's like... It's a very powerful thing. Like I said, even Snoop Dogg said it, like, Tupac, right before he died, like, his last songs were all about death. Yeah. Biggie Smalls, like, he had a whole album called I'm Ready to Die or some shit. Yeah. So it's like, he was just, you know, it's just like, don't play with that shit, because a lot of people, it's a lot of energy. That was a really dark song. We hope you're okay, Post Malone. Yes. We hope hope it's just a song. Yeah, the next song though has The Weeknd, number 13, called One Right Now. Oh. This is that one single that came out. I didn't realize that that's the song that's played on the radio. Yeah, so we've heard of that one too. I've only ever paid attention to the hook, and I think from just like hearing it in stores or on the radio, um, it was a clean version, and I didn't actually understand what the song was about. Like, mm. never paid attention, but he got one coming over, but he got one right now. Yeah, yeah. Well, no, least. no other lyrics, but yeah. I oh mean, yeah. I'm sure everyone's heard this song, or majority, not everyone. Yeah. So now, last track, number fourteen, new. Recording 12 January 3rd, 2020. No lyrics. Euthanasia. Euthanasia. I like that version more than the original. Not the lyrics, but the way he sang it. Oh. Instead of the first one. Oh, okay. But I, I feel like it sounded different. I don't know. I like the guitar. Yeah, I liked it. Was it. Nice. it was cool. I liked it. His voice sounds nice. Yeah, he has a good. That was a cool singing voice if he even had auto tune or something. I don't know. Yeah, it, it sounded sound cool. raw. Yeah. It sounded a lot more raw than the usual of what he has. I think it just sounds very dark to me because I don't listen to this type of stuff or i haven't in a while i mean the darkest or like the more heartbreaky shit that i've ever heard that i'm hearing is like bryson tiller but that's just because he has a really good voice and he's like catchy but he also has a lot more like upbeat stuff you know yeah listening to this just reminded me of like all the shit that has happened to you know there's just artists dying and shit and it's just scary because you don't really know if it's just his niche and he's singing just because he likes his type of music or if he's really is going through something. And then, you know, a lot of times it's too late to like ever really know, you know? Yeah. But that's why, like I said, that's why I feel like a lot of people love him as a person because he's willing to like sing about this shit that a lot of people can relate to, you know? Yeah, hopefully making that album, he was able to, like, release a lot of those feelings. And then that was, like, him putting it into a piece of work and, like, you know, really, hopefully, you know, taking care of himself and, like, releasing all of those feelings. And, you know, now the butterflies on the cover. So 
that kind of leads me into a little more optimism. Like of he's yeah, of he's grown out of like a cocoon and he's changing. Yeah, like he's shed from that can- cocoon. Cancun. <laughs> <laughs> cocoon 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 and um now he's like ready to be himself but he made a piece of art being this album of it yeah so hopefully he's doing good Um, yeah if not hit me up post malone i'll leave my you know instagram in the description you have a friend within me yes but (laughs) i think that'll conclude and to everyone out there too like if you're really going through hard shit like feel free to like hit me up, hit her up, yeah. I mean, hit someone up, you know, because it just always, music like this always reminds me of like, there's a lot of people going through a lot of shit that like my little problem that I have within our house or, you know, just something small, like doesn't really mean shit. You know, it's all first world problems when there's people out there really going through hard shit. Yes. All love. Um... But yeah, hopefully you guys like this album review. Feel free to check out our other socials down in the description below. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Yeah, check out our other videos and um, we will see you in the next one. Yes. Bye. Bye. You click your tongue before you talk. Yeah. That. That. You know, yeah. So like, what time? (laughs) (laughs) Feel free to um, check out our other other social... Feel free to check out our other social. Shoshosh! <laughs> Feel free to check out our other social. <laughs> Stop.